guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to to episodes 3 and 4 of Horizon in the Middle of Nowhere. So let's go ahead and get started with episode 3. And 3, 2, 1, go. Yeah, they're not going to last forever, though. Something bad's coming. All I want to know is right now is why did she sing that song? It, it, she's sung the song every single episode as of right now. There's a reason why. And of course, like, because I said this last week, there's a connection between the song and why she's singing it. The lyrics mean something, and I'm guessing whatever it is, Whatever it means, we're not going to know until later on. I mean, this is only episode three, but I don't know. I'm a little suspicious. Dorm room. <laughs> mm, probably the headmaster of headmistress, master, somebody, your dorm advisor. Honestly, you're worse than 20.
I'm wondering when the heck these two gonna meet. That's that's the thing I want to know. Because I feel like they're going to take something from like a uh, hundred, but maybe not. <laughs> Come here, babe. Oh, I got gotcha. you. It is a big ass friend. I need to really care about it. Huh? Oh, Yeah, let's just hope nothing bad happens, but something bad could happen. Okay, so are these two, are they in a relationship? Because they, they seem like they are. Maybe. If they aren't, I ship them. I don't care. In my opinion, they're in a relationship. But you can still deliver it, right? Are we serious? <laughs> And there she goes. Why is Sage you so adorable? I can't. <laughs> Protect them. So cute. Okay, is this the right room now? Do you get your room switch? Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Yeah, it's all right. You know what? Hey, it's okay. Shivery of a failed night did that. And you know what? I'm fine with it doing it this year. <laughs> oh, you're in a wheelchair. Still waiting, huh? Don't be a pussy. Here you go. <laughs> I mean, I just want him to go do it, but like, oh my god, he's being a pussy about it, but you know, he has to be gone now. My thing is, how the hell did she see him all the way over there? Mm -hmm. 2020 vision shit. Plus, he has a package to deliver. <laughs> yeah, evasion of privacy. Master, don't listen to your dad. Uh, uh, 20. Yeah, this is for you.
Um, and twenty went up on to witness. That's the word. See, now I'm kind of getting a little, like, teeny tiny cokey ass feels from this. Of course, because she died. He has ways of coping. Just like anyone else. Unfortunately, yes. There is something I do want to say about Master's dad, but I'm going to wait until we finish the episode. Because. You know what the art style reminds me of? It's I think it's Oh My Goddess or something like that. Because um, I think Sorangi, one of her voice actors in that show, it's either that or something else. If it's not that show, because uh, whatever the show is, it's on the tip of my tongue. I just can't remember the name of it. Because not him, her, looks like one of the other characters. Well, there's one. I told you something bad was going to happen. I mean, I'm about to say you're a little pedophile up in that.
This ain't gonna be like corpse party, right? <laughs> Well, I mean, that is from the book, I mean, well, but shouldn't she just tell them, even though you just like. Did what you did? Pillows? Body pillows? Huh? Ah! Huh. <laughs> well, those two are having fun. <laughs> okay, so Masa's father, I don't like him. He seems like an ass. Like, I mean, when you have someone who has that much power and assuming into the royalty, I mean, sometimes either you're going to get one of two things. You're going to get someone who is like the nicest, sweetest person. Are you going to get an asshole? His dad is an asshole. I really don't like him. I don't think, you know, maybe I'll change my mind on him. But like, as of right now, just officially seeing him in this episode, he just seems very hard on Masa. And it, you got to feel bad for him. Like, honestly, Jesus, like, no. Okay, so now learning the backstory on how Horizon died, like, and knowing that this next episode will be 10 years since she's dead. But necessarily she ain't, you know, she's dead. But then, you know, you got this chick who has Horizon's name. Who somewhat uh, apparently looks like Horizon. Except she has more of a silvery hair. While the actual Horizon looked like it was grayish. I, I think I'm going to go back and like check. But I, I don't know. I just really want Tori to go in there, confess to her grave, get it over with. <laughs> because, in my opinion, I mean, yes, he, he's being a little pussy about it, he's being a little shit, and it's just like, come on, it'll make yourself feel better. Everybody's rooting for him to just do this, and they believe in him, even though, essentially, it's just... I think in a way, like, when he confesses, it's, it's his, in his way, like, him moving on from her. But essentially, the, you know, I'm gonna say the robot version, android version of Horizon, whoever she really is, because we necessarily don't really know anything about her yet, and I'm guessing there's going to be a point where they're gonna meet. He, it's gonna be like 100 when, you know, <laughs> Emily and I... <laughs> 
<laughs> but and I was like, hmm, yeah, there's some backstory on those two, and then it finally happened. So they're gonna see each other. He may like immediately say Horizon. Maybe something might happen with her. She might like get all these memories about him and stuff, and then she may remember. I really don't know. But I just truly, really want him to finally go into this grave, tell her, or really her grave, but still in a way her, his thoughts, that he loves her. And so essentially he can move on from it. Because, I mean, he has his own way of coping. And, I mean, it, it could literally be anything. And, I mean, we all have different ways of when someone who was closest to us, um, family member, animal, um, best friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, husband, wife, we all have our own ways in coping. And even though maybe like one day, like every day is a constant battle for someone, you know, no matter what you're dealing with in a depression, um, an illness, a death, um, being addicted to something, it, it's a constant battle every single day. You're going to have good days and you're going to have bad days. Essentially, like we haven't really seen Tori like go into his bad days it's really essentially, like, days where he's like, you know, should I go, should I not? He's hesitating with himself. So, um, I mean, as of right now, we've only really seen him in the good days. And I hope that there's a moment where, you know, he does break down. And whether it's in episode um, four or in episode five or in episode six, I think essentially he needs this. Because it, it feels like, to me, um, because of the fact that we haven't really truly seen him break down, he seems a little one-dimensional to me. He has emotions and thoughts and feelings just like any other character in the show from what I've seen. But because of the fact is he hasn't really let out his true emotions and how he relatively really feels about dealing with the fact that, yeah, it's been almost 10 years since, you know, the love of his life has, you know, died. It, it makes you wonder, why hasn't he let it out? That, that's the biggest thing I want to know. Because you, you gotta, like, kind of think about it if someone close to you had died. And it's been several years and maybe you're still torn about it. And people are wondering, like, how are you coping with it? Why haven't you, like, cried? Why haven't you lashed out at somebody? Think about it like that. And that, like, it, that's how I'm thinking about it in a way. But, I mean, it was a good episode. I, you know, something bad is going to happen because, you know, the, the guy got killed. Mm, so something's coming in this next episode. Don't know why. But go ahead and pause the video. And, of course, I will see you guys in one second for episode four. Okay, episode four in three, two, one, go. I mean, everybody says the exact same thing. Um, damn, don't hesitate, shit. Yeah. Okay. So with each person saying the exact same line, Everybody, to me, as of right now, I'm going to compare it to this. This feels like a chess game. Everybody a pawn in this master plan. Everybody, you know, everybody going to be betraying somebody because they're saying, you know, each character is saying, when the time comes, it's like, when the time comes, what? What do you have to do? And you, and you, and you, and them, and him, and her, and everybody else. Somebody's got to be doing something. Like, is it going to be like, I can't really trust anybody except the main character and Masa? And then maybe Horizon as well? Uh, maybe the teacher? Because I can trust, like, as of right now, maybe, like, four characters. Maybe, um, Kimmy, 
And I'm guessing the girl who is either a partner with Kimmy or in a relationship with Kimmy, because I, I got questions on them. I don't know. Maybe the naked dude, too, as well. <laughs> I mean, I know she's underage and she can't drink, possibly. I mean, but y'all ain't gonna give her no food. I mean, isn't that a little rude? But can't Putayo, you know, do her work and be a normal high school girl at the same time? I mean, just saying. I mean, but look at all the other kids going to school, and they still have jobs and stuff to do. If they can do it, why can't she? Okay, so, I mean, that's good. Okay, did uh, Kazuno do something in the past? Must know. Uh, 
okay, I do love the fact is that what they're doing with this anime, they're showing things that happened in the previous episode that are concluding or happening at the same time as other parts, which is good. Because if this show didn't do that, I probably would have been like a little upset because then you're wondering, okay, what happened during this? What happened during that? And such. It's kind of like Dora run away. Because, and that's what I essentially kept wondering, like, between episode one and two, because every single time they keep marking different places at different times, and I kept wondering, I was like, is there ever going to be a point where we're ever really going to see something happen, and then in a different time, we're going to see something else, and then the same thing happen again? Yeah, this ain't gonna be good. Mm -hmm. There's that guy who died. No, that wasn't him. <laughs> No, what is that? It's blood. So essentially he was a part of it too. So lay down. Are you okay? Cody, go lay down. Go. I'm almost done. I got like 12 minutes left, babe. What's wrong? Behind him? What's behind me? Oh! 
is that Horizon? Oh my god! But she's so cute though! Oh my god! But I don't think that's Horizon's ghost. See, that's why you can't trust anybody but yourself. Hell, there's times when you can't even trust your fucking self, too. And you think he hears? Is on how many phases of the Genesis Project have. That or kill you, but... I'm not with you, I believe. Why don't you go over there and find out? Just saying. Oh, my fucking allergies. So is it a possibility that Dantan's daughter, he she knows about this and what her father is planning to do. And she's okay with this? Girl. Girl. Seems like it. No. <laughs> oh, is it nice? <laughs> he 
this doesn't matter who the fuck kills. That's what it is in the end. I mean, they, they're basically wanting to start the world over again for what now, the second time now? But. I mean, you know she's gonna kill you, right? Like, mm hmm. God, they plan a lot for this shit. You know what I'm also getting? Um, because it's been a while since I reacted to this show. Clockwork Planet vibes with this a teeny tiny bit. So a little bit of Kogi a little bit of Clockwork Planet, and then something else. I can't remember what the last thing is. I mean, you know, she's just one measly fucking doll, but, you know, she's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with that dude. Honestly. I mean, in a way, he getting his ass up, but, um... <laughs> Way it's pretty.
Yeah, this is about to be complete and total chaos now. For all of you. Now I want to know, what the heck are the students going to do? I mean, this is about to be a freaking war. I mean, essentially it is now. But, oh, okay. Does everybody's dad in the show, are they, like, complete and total assholes? Like, oh my god. I really thought, um... Her father was just a really nice guy, and that you know, it was just like you know, just talking to an old friend. No, he, I, I mean, he just as worse as Masa's dad. Like, what? What the heck is this? What? <laughs> I wasn't expecting this battle to like, or not even a battle, a war to start in episode four. I thought it was gonna be a nice, sweet, gentle episode. Now. What the heck gonna happen in these next last episode, like the second half of the Sam series? I don't know. I, I'm I'm so scared. Like mm, people might die. Not even might people will die. Somebody. Oh my god. And see, Tori didn't go to the freaking grave yet because it's not the next day. I'm scared. That was Tori's voice, wasn't it? Oh my god. So, okay. So, Futayo's dad, I felt like he was going to die. Someone else is gonna, like, uh, uh, so many characters are gonna be dying in this next episode. Don't know how many, but it's probably gonna be a lot. Maybe. But, I, I feel like, you know, this is gonna be the episode where Tori and Horizon are finally going to meet, and they're going to see each other, even though I wanted him to go to the grave, and essentially that's how I wanted them to meet, is such I but, no, you can't have everything that you want, because, you know, mm, I don't know what else to say about it, I really know, I'm just scared, and I really don't want characters to die, but, I mean, oh, a big oof, that's all I can say, Big oof. Like, oh my god. I've been caring for some of these characters since episode one. And if some of, like, okay, the the girl who, I, I, I thought she was blind. The one who, you know, you cannot see her eyes because her bangs are covering her face. Uh, well, essentially her eyes. I don't want her to die. I like her a lot. Kimmy and then her somewhat girlfriend. The two girls with the, uh, the angel wings. I don't want them to die. Um, the Indian looking dude, even though we haven't seen him since episode one, I wouldn't want him to die because I think he's very interesting, even though I haven't seen him since episode one. But I mean, come on, like, I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> I'm just scared. I am scared. Mm, that's what happened with all three of my Patreon shows this week. I am scared. I am scared in a nutshell. All three shows made me worried or scared by the end of the second freaking episode. Or sad or made me cry. That's all. This is what this week is like. Next week, it's just going to be like death. I don't know. I mean, you want to have somebody die in my... What, mm. Yeah, you're going to have somebody die in Monogatari. You're going to have somebody die in Sephiroth Gear. You're going to have somebody die in, in Horizon as well. I mean, shoot. <laughs> like, they... like. Every single episode, first episode or even second episode, all started out good. And then by the end of the second episode, something bad happened or just dramatic happened. And you're just over here like, what the fuck just happened? I, like, what the fuck is going to happen next? Who's going to live? Who's going to survive? Like, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm scared. <laughs> but other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episodes three and four of Horizon in the middle of nowhere. If you guys enjoyed that, please give me a like, it really helps me out, also subscribe to my channel, I make videos every single day, join the Magic Squad, and of course, I will see you guys officially, um, next Friday for the Patreon, since I'm officially having all Patreon shows come out on Fridays now, and next Tuesday for everybody else for episodes 5 and 6, bye guys! Thank you.